From Wall Street to Main Street, this is LA Late. It's a big night with a big week upon us as, as that CPI for the month of July is released within days. But what does it mean for your economy, your recession, your inflation, your benefits, and of course, your housing and your unemployment? Plus, the latest on the fourth stimulus. In tonight's breaking news report, we're going to go over why the earnings recession that was released with a series of reports this last week caused a lot of confusion and what this big week means for you. As we learn with that CPI read of July released on August 10th of this Wednesday, the latest detail why inflation may have not peaked and why your benefits are going up the largest of a generation, about 5000 why that data released on Friday was a shocker. And that data was like anything we've never, nothing we've ever seen in the history of this channel. Why these numbers are continuing to shock Americans and why the analysis is very confusing across the board. We had the unemployment claims on Thursday go to 260, but then on Friday, the job creation number came in and shocked Americans left and right. We'll go over what that means for inflation. We'll go over what that means for your money. We'll go over what that means for forced stimulus. We'll go over the big checks that became law in the month of in the month of May and how to get those big forced stimulus checks in every U.S. state tonight. How much? About one hundred thousand dollars. Big checks across the board. Viewers have been getting them. We'll meet two viewers who got checks in the last seven days. One got fourteen checks of rent, and the other got twelve months of utilities. The big checks done by executive action from President Joseph Biden, you qualify. There are no other forced too much checks except these. And tonight we're going to go over why members continue to win and why you want to get these checks as well. Plus, we'll be going over the latest details on the situation with this economy. Very fluid and very confusing. And i got to tell you, <laughs> it's a jam-packed recording. Data analysis. The data tonight not very disputable, but the analysis very disputable. Tonight you'll learn why some people cannot agree whether we're in recession or not in recession, whether the inflation is peaked or whether the inflation is not peaked, whether the labor's strong or whether the labor's not strong. They can't even agree upon whether the lobster shorts are wearable or not. Needless to say, it's a breaking news report, and tonight we go over everything you need to know from the shores of Santa Monica, California. It's the biggest recording of the entire month because that data that came in last Friday was the shocker that we had not seen coming. From the shores of Santa Monica, California, it's Evenings LA. And tonight we go over the breaking news you need to know, the money you need to get. The breaking details start right now. Good evening, everybody. I hope you're having a beautiful night. And welcome to all the new members that joined in less than the last two days. 100 new members in one video alone yesterday. It's a big night with a lot of money. We'll go over what it means for you and where this economy is going. Situation's very confusing tonight. I'll analyze it for you, slowing it down, going over the latest data, and going over the biggest monies at issue. Plus, we'll get you that financial freedom by getting those four stimulus checks in every U.S. state. So much to go over tonight. I'm excited you're here. Thank you for your very kind messages during my absence. I was hospitalized for three days. I'm back and one feeling wonderful tonight. And tonight we have a lot to go over. We have the inflation, the recession, the housing market, the unemployment, and of course, your four stimulus. From the shores of Santa Monica, California, this, my friends, is Evening's Ally. And I hope you're doing a great night across the board. You know, it's a very confusing economy. We already knew that. <laughs> we already knew that. But we did not expect what we have today. Let's go over what's going on. Back last week, I told you two major numbers that were being released for labor. I told you Thursday number we're very frequent with because we've been watching every Thursday. Every Thursday since this channel launched are the new un un unemployment claims. Every Thursday they're released. And we've been looking at that data. And it's generally, trajectory has a, its trajectory has been horrible from 140 to 260 this last Thursday. So we understood the number of jobless claims the worst of 2022, and it's getting worse every week. Pretty simple, right? Yes. We also knew that Friday had another labor number. And that is the non-farm payroll job creation. How many jobs the private sector created in the prior month? 
And that number also features the unemployment rate. We also knew the following, that the Federal Reserve, the White House, and myself generally, look at that unemployment rate as the indication best of how strong or how weak the labor market is. If you're watching last week on the show, we understood that the Thursday number was critical, and we really didn't pay much attention to the Friday number. I mean, we didn't really think it was going to be a surprise of a number. Uh, and then it was as, as surprising as seeing lobster shorts in the White House. <clears throat> it was just a shocker. Here is what happened with the data on Friday. The jobs report was released for the month of July, and Wall Street is looking for 258,000 jobs created for the month of July, which would have been a slight downward trend from the month of June. It was not 258,000. What was it? 528,000. <laughs> Excuse me? Yes, 528,000 jobs were created in this economy in the month of July. Now, it also had the unemployment rate released as well. That unemployment rate came in at 3.5%, better than the 3.6% expected by Wall Street. How low is 3.5% unemployment? It's not pre-pandemic levels. It's not even pre-2020 levels. It's most of you were not alive levels. <laughs> this number was last seen this low for unemployment since in 1969. We have never seen this many people employed in, this, in an economy of the United States like this since 1969. So this shocked the market. Suddenly, everyone ran left and right. That's the data. We're going to go over the analysis in one second. Let's go over the other data we had in this report on Friday. Wage growth surged dramatically and higher than expected. It grew 5.2% year to date and 0.5% compared to the month before. So this was the fastest rate of grow of a labor rate, how much you're being paid by an employer, since seeing the 1980s. Really good there as well. Okay, here starts the analysis. Let me give you a preview of what's happening tonight. Every time I have analysis for you, I have contradictory analysis 10 seconds later. So here we go. The comment coming in from Liz and Saunders, Chief Investment Strategist at Charles Schwab, obviously that equity trading firm for you to buy stocks online, said there's no way, there's no other side to the story. There's not a lot of yeah, but other than it's not positive for the market and from a Fed perspective. For the economy, this is all good news. Unless you don't agree with her. <laughs> and I have a comment coming in just 10 seconds. This is one half of the camp of analysis. That this number released in this payroll job creation number on Friday is hideously great news. In fact, most of the analysts in this camp say it says we're not in a recession. The economy is in great shape. Let's go over what also was indicated in those numbers on Friday. Where are the jobs created? If you're watching the corporate earnings coming out on this channel all last week, you know exactly which industries are doing well because they had the great earnings numbers. And those earnings numbers were certainly not social media, <laughs> certainly not uh, the social media companies. They missed, and they were Twitter and Facebook, they were Twitter and Facebook and Snap, and they were not the tech companies. They miss as well. Google, Alphabet, parent company of Google, uh, also missing were were Microsoft uh, and Intel miss, Chipotle miss. So you knew they were not in the great camp, which was the one that was in the great camp. Exactly what you thought. Travel and leisure all last week being on corporate earnings. Hospitality being on corporate earnings. And they are what led with the job creation numbers. Travel and leisure led the job creation numbers in the month of July, just like you expect. 96,000, slightly short of 1.2 million pre-pandemic levels. So there you go. That was very predictable across the board. And then when you look to retail jobs, they trailed and only 22,000 jobs created. Remember, retail did not post well for those corporate earnings. This is fascinating for your four stimulus check. We're going to go over that four stimulus check in just a second. Here we go. When you look at this data and the analysis, where does the analysis land? Bank of America economist Michael Gapin says the report shows cold, throws cold water on a significant cooling in the labor market, but it's a good sign for the broader economy and the workers. Well, not everyone agrees. Here we go with the Federal Reserve. All last week, the Federal Reserve governors were, were uh, attending luncheons. We had Daly out of San Francisco. We had Boulard out of St. Louis. And what do they say? They said, why are these analysts saying there's no more Fed rate increases? We didn't say that. And why do they keep on saying inflation has peaked? We haven't said that. 
and what did I say? I agree with you. Uh, you haven't said that. And I had said well, inflation is not baked. And the Fed governors are going to come in with a higher interest rate spike. What did I say to you last week? And what did the Fed governor say? And what did Wall Street say? I said that the Fed governors are back in the month of September. They don't mean the month of August. And they're going to do a 75 basis point increase. And the inflation is not peaked. And you're going to see a lot more increases for a long time. The analysts were polled on Wall Street, and less than 30% agreed with me at the time. This was Thursday, with 70% disagreeing with me, saying that there will be one more rate increase, and that's in August, 50, excuse me, in September, 50 basis point, and after that, they're done because inflation's peaked. Tonight, it's exactly what I had said. Tonight, 100% of analysts on Wall Street believe that what I said was correct that it is going to be 75 basis points in the month of September, and that inflation has not peaked, and there'll be a lot more rate hikes thereafter. Why did they change? They changed because, one, the Federal Reserve has a dual mandate, and the dual mandate is to reduce inflation, which they've not. They admit that. And number two, maximum employment. And now they have that unemployment number released on Friday that is absolutely wonderful, so their narrative from the Federal Reserve is, well, we can raise those interest rates over and over again because the labor market has the lowest unemployment since 1969. That's exactly what the Federal Reserve is saying. That's exactly what the Federal Reserve is going to do. And that is why Wall Street once again was wrong when 75% of them said, oh, they're done with this. Uh, the, the interest rate spikes are done. Inflation is not, it's now peaked. We'll go over breaking news comments from a Fed governor just within the last 24 hours that repeats my projections for September. Now, Daniel Zayo also now agrees with my analysis as well. On the one hand, it gives the Fed more confidence that it can tighten monetary, tighten monetary policy without leading to widespread rise in unemployment. Yes, because the unemployment is so low, the Federal Reserve believes it could do it. But it also shows the labor market isn't cooling, or at least wasn't cooling as fast as it anticipated. Exactly correct. The, the unemployment number is the lowest since 1969, so they feel they can get away with this. At the very least, it's a surprise. It is a surprise. And I think the Fed is on track to continue to tighten monetary policy. I told you that last week, before the number was released. Now, here is where the shocking details start to come in. Recession. Are we in a recession or are we not in a recession? This, my friends, is why you have to get that four symbols check in every US, U.S. state. Before I even go over whether we are in a recession or not in a recession, the fact that 50% of Wall Street analysts approximately say we are and the other 50% say we aren't, you can't risk this. You have to get that four symbols check in every U.S. state. In the big second half of this recording, we're going to go over all these incredible checks one at a time. But I'll also have a preview of these checks for you in just a second. You deserve these checks, and you need to get them. Go run this video and become a member. Get those four stimulus checks in every U.S. state. And get them right now, because if 50% of analysts say we are in a recession, and 50% say we're not, you can't risk this across the board. Let's go back into where the dispute lies and what the analysis is saying. So, a recession by definition is qualifies as two consecutive negative GDP quarters of negative GDP growth. We have that. We had that confirmation from the Department of Labor two weeks ago. But some analysts are now saying because of this number released last Friday, the job creation number, that the recession is basically a, a semantics. It's a recession by definition only. Okay, this is that first camp again. It's not my camp, not where I agree. The recession debate at this point is more academic than anything else. That, again, is Saunders, the Schwab strategist. You can't deny that growth is weakened, but that's the only point in bringing up two quarters of negative GDP growth. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because hold your breath, because in 10 seconds I'm going to have for you this second camp that says these aren't the only two negative quarters of GDP growth you're going to have. You're going to have a lot more negative quarters of GDP growth because we are in a recession. I'll tell you what's going on in just a second. The Federal Reserve. So tonight we know that there's 100% agreement on Wall Street about what I had said earlier last week. It will be 75 basis point for that September meeting that the Federal Reserve is going to come in very aggressively and on the interest rate spike. But not a lot of them still agree with me on there's going to be a lot more spikes. More about that in a second. Okay. If there's anything I can teach you tonight, I'm going to teach you this. When you're looking at two different groups, two different camps of analysis, and they're contradicting each other. One says apples, the other one says orange. One says tomato, one says tomato. One says lobster shorts, and the other one says 
Uh, no lobster shirts. Which one do you go with? You go with the bond traders. The bond traders historically never get stuff wrong. They are absolutely about as good as it comes. Equity traders, they're usually awful. They're usually just usually wrong. I mean, they really are. Bond traders tonight are saying, no, you're wrong, equity traders. There will be a recession. And the recession is now going to be far worse than we thought it was going to be as of last Friday. Yeah. See how dramatically different that is? The bond traders, who are people who trade, you know, two-year bonds, 10-year bonds, mortgage bonds, they say, oh, this data from the Federal Reserve on Friday is so bad for, for this economy that you are definitely seeing a recession. And you can see a lot worse recession than we even thought it was going to be before we had this data come in on Friday. Let me tell you why they say that. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about something called the yield inversion curve. And that yield inversion curve, you don't even really need to know what it is. But that yield inversion curve, after the Friday number came in, the yield inversion curve got a thousand percent worse. A thousand percent worse. The yield inversion curve exists when there is a belief we're going in recession. And the curve got worse, meaning there's more indication we're going in recession, after the bond traders saw that Friday number. When the bond traders saw that Friday number, they made the yield, curve, yield inversion curve a lot worse because they basically said, we're going into a recession. Here is the greatest quote of the night, and it comes from Ian Lingen, who, of course, is in the bond trader camp. US, uh, he's head of U.S. strategy, rate strategy at BMO, rate strategy for bonds. We've got as inverted a curve as we can get at as negative at 56 during that episode. The last time it was this inverted, the twos and thousands, was two-year treasury and 10-year treasury. It was back in 2000, and that was a much different overall rate situation. It's the second part of this quote that actually gets worse. My biggest takeaway from the inversion in the yield curve is that the market has big confidence the Fed's credibility is high. They will, the Federal Reserve, will continue to, to hike rates. The risk is that it will create a bigger economic headwind that the, than, the, than the economy can handle, and we will be tipping into, breathe, breathe, a more significant recession, says Lincoln. So he says the following. The Friday number from last Friday, which showed the lowest unemployment rate since the 1960s, basically says the Federal Reserve, go ahead and raise interest rates because the, the economy can survive it because the, the labor numbers are so great. The best unemployment numbers since 1969, go do those interest rate spikes. And the Federal Reserve will feel like they got that e-ticket, do those Federal, rate interest, Federal Reserve interest rate spikes. We'll do 75 basis points. We'll do them and do them and do them and we'll do too much. And send you in a recession. And, well, we already are in a recession. And send you into a deep recession. And far more pronounced, uh, scarier recession than we even thought. That's what the bond traders are doing. And so that is why the yield curve inversion is worse tonight. Because they're saying, folks, it's not only going to be a recession. It's going to be a far worse recession than we thought. Because the Federal Reserve is going to go, you know, crazy with their interest rate spikes now. Because they think they can do it. Because they think the labor market is so strong. Who agrees with them besides me? Who agrees with those bond traders besides me? The oil traders. Tonight, oil price is the lowest level feature on this channel for since Memorial Day weekend. Remember Memorial Day weekend, we dropped to $98 international brand crude for a few uh, days. And then uh, I think last Thursday before I became hospitalized for three days, it surged up to about 110. So it was about 110 for a few days. Well, tonight it's back down to uh to ninety uh four dollars <laughs> i was gonna say 98 i think i said 98 on afternoon is my apologies 94 i <laughs> mean 94 that is insanely low the reason why it's low and you know the answer actually i'll ask you this post a live chat if you know the answer why the oil traders are trading down the price of gasoline because they believe that the u.s economy is Finish the, finish the sentence, post the live chat. I'll chat back with you in a second to see if you got it right. Earnings recession. Now, this one is a laughable moment. It's laughable because it's so ridiculous. What are the equity traders saying? They're saying, you know what? We had all those massive earnings that came in over the last two weeks. And yeah, LA has this beautiful purple graphic. <laughs> he has a purple graphic that says they're all the, the companies that miss on those earnings front. But 75% of S&P companies beat on earnings. 
So why is LA running that ga graphic? Tell LA to get rid of that graphic. Well, tell them I'm not getting rid of the graphic. Why? They're missing the point. These companies, the companies that beat on earnings over the last two weeks, would normally report like a $10 quarter. But they said, you know what? We had problems with inflation. We had problems with Putin and recession. We're going to give you guidance that when we report corporate earnings in the next week, it's not going to be $10. It'll be $4. And then what happened? They reported $5. So while she's like, they had a beat. We had a beat. Do you have a beat? It sounds like a rap song. Doesn't it? You got the beat. I got the No. <laughs> I think there was a song with that title. You got the beat. I got the beat. Yeah, we got the beat. No, you got the beat of a, a, of a downgraded number. You would normally post a 10 and you, and you downgrade into four. And when you posted a five, that's a beat of a lower number. That's nothing to celebrate home unless you're, you know, making residuals on the song. <laughs> I didn't sing the songs. So don't, don't think I sang your whatever that song is, because I don't even know what that song is. Uh, here we go. Always listen to the Fed governors, because what the Fed governors say, they do. You may not, we may not agree with what they're doing, but they do say what they're going to do. They do do what they're going to say. No, they do do what they said they're going to do. <laughs> Bowman, uh, Michelle Bowman, she's a Federal Reserve governor. She's spoken less than 24 hours, and guess what she said? Okay, sit back for this one. Um, put down the put down the cookie, the the, the donut, because this is a lot to digest. It's it's a little bit scary. She uh, spoke on Saturday, and she thought, said the following: My view is that you should expect a similar sized rate increase on the table for September, and continuing until we see inflation declining in a consistent, meaningful, and lasting way, which basically she says has not happened yet. So there you go. I told you there was going to be 75 basis points in September. And we continue at 75 basis points and continue and continue and continue until we finally see inflation come down with a CPI or a PPI or a, P, or a um, PCE lower. And she says, yes. Now, she's not alone because remember, Daly and Bouard about Wednesday or Thursday last week said, who said we're going to stop interest rate spikes? We never said that. Inflation's not coming down. The Personal Consumption Expenditure Index was released two Fridays ago. It showed that inflation is the highest level since the 1980s. There's been no inflationary data that shows it's come down. And what data do we have this, when, this Wednesday? I believe Wednesday is August 10th. The CPI. And that, my friends, is why you have to get a forced stimulus check in every U.S. state. Let's go over the second sentence she says in here because this one's big for your benefits. She says a significant risk that high inflation will continue into next year. Wow. For necessities including food, housing, fuel, and vehicles. The larger threat to the strong labor market is excessive inflation, which is allowed to continue, could lead to further economic softening, resulting in a prolonged period of economic weakness, coupled with high inflation, like we experienced in the 1970s. What's she saying? It's taxation. She's basically saying if we don't get inflation under control, you're going to have weakness in the economy plus inflation, that's stagflation. In any case, we must fulfill our, con our commitment to lowering inflation and will remain steadfastly strong to that task. Let's go over what that means for your benefits. Your benefits are going up the biggest of a generation. And yes, we had Diane, we had Lynn Glenn, and other viewers ask me, do we have to wait three months of data to see the assurances that, in, that our benefits are going up the highest of a generation? No, now you don't. Now you don't. Let's go over the equation for this, and then we'll go over those big four stimulus checks in every U.S. state. Your benefits are going up a lot. How much? About $5,000. If you're on SSA, SSI, SSDI, Social Security and Viral Benefits. Why? Because inflation has not peaked, as, as Bauman says, and inflation is going to be with us for a while. Three months of data determines the equation, but let's go over what's at issue starting right now. It starts with the inflationary numbers coming on August 10th. 11th and 12th. The data started back on July 13th when we saw the data for the CPI. Released September, released July 13th and showed that inflation went up dramatically in the month of June. What happened then? Inflation, which had been 8.6% in the month of May, surged to, out of control to the highest level seen of a generation, 9.1% in the month of June. That signaled that inflation had not peaked and it also signaled your benefits going up a lot. What happened consecutively over the next few days? Well, we had on July 13th, the CPI read come in dramatically. 
Then we had on the 14th of July, the PPI released, also showing inflation has gone up staggeringly. And then on the day after retail sales. So what are we looking for you and your benefits? We are looking to see whether three months of data shows that inflation will continue to go up and has not peaked. But tonight, we may not have to wait for that. Why? Because if Bauman is correct, and if you believe Bauman is correct, your benefits are going up the highest of a generation. Let's go over how this works, and let's go over the data for this starting right now. Your benefits are tied to something called COLA, cost of living adjustment. And as COLA goes up, then what happens with your benefits? Your benefits go up. Let's go over how this works and what's at issue starting right now. Your benefits are going up because inflation has not peaked. And who is this you if you're on SSI, SSDI, Social Security Railroad Benefits? Automatic, yes. Direct deposit, yes. In the mail, yes. However you get your benefits, all of you. $5,000 for everyone, no. Some people more than $5,000, some people less. Same percentage raise, yes. Which three months? Let's go over how it calculates and what today, tonight's news and how it impacts the situation across the board. Your benefits are tied to something called COLA, cost of living adjustment. It's determined by another number. That is the CPI-W. But only the CPI-W for three months. The month of July, released on August 10th, this coming week. The month of August, released September. And the month of September, released in October. We need to see three months of data that shows that the CPI from the month of June has not gone down. Well, last Friday, not this Friday, but the Friday before that, the Personal Consumption Expenditure Index, an inflationary number, came in. And it was up, straight up, highest number since the 1980s. And tonight, if you believe this Fed governor, Bauman, inflation's not going down in July. It ain't going down in August. And likely it's going to stay with us for a lot more months into 2023. So I answer Lynn Glenn and Gail and all those other people had this great question. Is inflation still tracking higher? Do we really need to see three months of data to confirm this for our benefits? Potentially not. If this July number released on August 10th is so through the roof, as many people are projecting, then you may not have to have to wait to August or September. I mean, you really have to solidify the assurance, the assurances that inflation is, is still that high to know your benefits are going up. But you may feel a lot more confident say, I think August, September is going to be about the same. And the Fed governors are all saying inflation is not peaked. They're all saying they got to raise those interest rate spikes for a long time to come. They're doing it in September, 75 basis point. So if that's the case, the biggest lift of your benefits of a generation is upon us. Direct deposit, all you, about 5000 or less or more, depending on how much you get, but the same percentage increase across the board. Now, let's jump into your forced stimulus check in every U.S. state. you got to get a forced stimulus check in every U.S. state. Why? Because we're in a recession, and yet 50% of analysts believe we're not in a recession. They believe inflation's peaked and there's no more inflation. And if they're wrong, then guess what happens? You're on the wrong side of the equation. You can't do that. you got to get that forced stimulus check in every U.S. state. Go under this video, become a member. Purple Hawk, Purple Power Cow, so you know VIP. And in the big second half, we're going to go over all those incredible checks one at a time. But first, let's go a preview of them starting right now. These forced stimulus checks are approximately $100,000 of checks. Single individual, $75,000 or less. Go get it. Married couple, $150,000 or less. Done by the President of the United States by executive action in the month of March. You go get them. We're going to go over each of these incredible checks that members are getting on this channel routinely. And we'll go over all of them after the commercial break. You qualify. Don't wait. Done by executive action. Hence, it's federal. Hence, it's in every U.S. state. In the month of March, single individual, $75,000 or less. Married couple, $150,000 or less. Rent or own, with children, without children, on benefits, SSI, SSDI, retired, working, not working. Get these incredible checks at, across the board. Become a member. Go right in this video and become a member. And in after the commercial break, we're going to go over all these incredible checks one at a time. Plus, we'll go over this recession versus no recession analysis. Why are the bond traders, the oil traders, and myself all saying the same thing and the equity traders are saying the exact opposite? Which one is it? I'll give you the data and then I'll give you the analysis, the two cams and my analysis for you to decide across the board. It's a big second half. And in a week in which we had a lot of surprises with that massive details coming on Friday, the new week is going to be even bigger. When Friday delivers, excuse me, Wednesday delivers the CPI read from the month of July. 
It's like nothing we've seen before. So go under this video, become a member. At the commercial break, we'll go over all these incredible checks one at a time. You deserve them. Get them right tonight. Get them tonight. And remember, if you watched the miss the show earlier today, I know this is a Sunday if you're watching this for the very first time when it airs for August 8th. But in a special treat, I'm going to give you that newsletter tonight because I was absent on Friday and Thursday night. So that newsletter will be delivered to you tonight at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, August 7th, even though it's a Sunday. Here's the community page, and I'll be back with you in 60 seconds. If you want money right now, not five days from now, and not five weeks from now, then reach out to the community page. The volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities. That's at news.la.com forward slash community. The community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you. They can help you find rent, utilities, SNAP, food benefits, mortgage assistance, and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. Their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram individuals reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from, and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. The excitement starts on mornings LA Late at 9 a.m. Home LA Late returns at 11 a.m. daily. And then afternoons LA Late at 1 p.m. Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LA Late. And the excitement continues right now for a beautiful long night across the coast. Hope you're having a beautiful day, and boy, it's going to be a big week. On August 10th, that CPI read is going to be released, which gives you an indication of inflation, which gives you an indication of how big your benefits are going up. Then the day after, we have the latest details on the PPI as well. From the shores of Santa Monica, California, it's a big night. We're going over your economy, your recession, your inflation, your benefit raise, and of course, housing, and yes, unemployment, and your forced stimulus. Become a member and stay this big second half as we go over all these incredible checks starting right now. Hope you have a beautiful night across the board. Boy, it's an exciting night. I mean, I don't think, I've been saying this all day long, I don't think I've ever had a, a, a day like today's recordings because we have data, which is indisputable, and then we have analysis that's being very disputed. I did have a preview of this really last week where I said the jobs number is often a number that is prone to a lot of contradictory analysis. Tonight is that night. <laughs> we can go over more about that in a second. But let's get some checks. You deserve it. Back in the month of March, the President of the United States is a series of executive actions. So these huge checks are for you. These huge checks are for you. There are no other forced stimulus checks. These are the ones. Viewers have been getting them on a regular basis. We're going to go over all these incredible checks starting right now. These forced stimulus checks are huge. A series of executive actions that amount to these checks, about $100,000 and your eligibility. My focus in the month of March was, one, getting you big checks that helps you survive this recession. And number two, broad eligibility. First, there's about $100,000 of checks for you. Second, you qualify. Single individual, $75,000 or less, go get it. Married couple, $150,000 or less, go get it. If you rent, if you own, if you're on benefits, if you're not on benefits, go get these huge checks. There are no other checks. These are the monster checks. And you're going to need them because, in my opinion, you're going to have a very, very deep, hard recession. It's not going to be a walk in the park. I'm going to go over all these incredible checks with you starting right now. The first check is check A, a $6,500 to $12,000 for a stimulus check in every U.S. state. Single individual, $75,000 or less, go get it. Married couple, $150,000 or less, go get it. And if you're on benefits, go get it as well. How do you get it? Step one, subscribe to this channel. Step two, go down in the membership newsletter, traditionally delivered Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, but tonight is also delivered on this beautiful Sunday night as well. Go down to where it says check A, click the link, and it sends you into the incredible four stimulus check for check A. You choose your state, then you choose the weatherizing grant, and then you apply. 
So simple, that incredible check A, $6,500 to $12,000 across the board. Now, you're not going to stop there yet. You're going to go get check B. Check B is a fifteen dollars to $80,000 for stimulus check in every U.S. state. Single individual, $75,000 less, go get it. Married couple, $150,000 less, go get it. And if you have benefits, go get these huge checks. And they're absolutely incredible. Now, how do you get this one? You know the routine. Step one, become a member. Step two, go down in the membership newsletter. You find Check B. Click the link and it sends you right into that wonderful Check B. Choose your state and then go get up, go get an apply. So far, that's hundred thousand dollars a check. Check A and Check B. Now, you're not going to stop there yet. You're going to go get Check C. Check C is even better. Check C is for rent, utilities, mortgage assistance, and more. And I have some big success stories for Check C in just a second. How do you get Check C? First, you go down in the membership newsletter to assess Check C. There it is. It tells you who to call, where to call, and how to get these incredible Check Cs. Upwards of 12 different places to get those incredible Check Cs. You go get them. You deserve these big sums of money. And how much of you are getting for Check Cs? A lot. Averaging about 45000 A lot have gotten over 150000 and many have gotten an MSC, $2,000 a month over 12 months. You go get them. And it is absolutely incredible. You go down the membership newsletter. Well, step one, remember to subscribe. Step, step two, go down in the membership newsletter and get that, uh, go where it says check C. And click, and then it tells you who to call, where to call, and what to say. Let's go over check A, B, and C, and then also go some success, tech, success stories. One of the benefits of being a member is the incredible newsletter that features also this in the newsletter, the worksheets. If you're sitting at home and just found this channel or you are an existing member, congratulations, because this is the worksheets that's really going to help you. This worksheet is a PDF, and it's a PDF with a series of pages for you to keep track on what's going on and to help you keep track of your money. It's namely the four stimulus. Tonight, what do we know about page one? Page one, we have the inflation. Inflation has not peaked. There's been no data that shows inflation has peaked. Inflation has not peaked because the personal consumption expenditure released two Fridays ago was straight up. The CPI, PPI, and retail sales for the month of July are straight up. And Bowman says, hey, who told you inflation has peaked? So the same thing with Daly and Boulard last week says inflation has not peaked. And we're not done with inflation. Recession. We've had two negative quarters of GDP growth. That qualifies a recession. But in the big second half, we're going to go over why half of the camp says no recession. The other half says, oh, yeah, it's not only going to be a recession. It's going to be a worse recession than we initially thought. Initially thought. Labor. It determines, it's important to understand which number for labor you want to look at. Or maybe you want to look at both. First, the new jobless claims released every Thursday on this channel. And this trajectory is straight up. It's really bad. The labor has gotten really bad when you look at the jobless claims. It was 140,000 new jobless claims, no less than about a month ago. Tonight, it's 260, so it's getting really bad very quickly. And then when you look at the Federal Reserve, what are they going to look at? They're looking at the unemployment percentage. What percentage of the U.S. economy is at unemployment? And it's the lowest level since 1969. So that is really good data across the board. What is the Federal Reserve going to do? 75 basis points. Yeah, obviously. In September, what are they going to do with thereafter? I say they're going to have a lot of 75 basis points. And that's basically what Bowman said. Equity trade, stock trade. So no, they're done with one interest rate spike, and then they're going to go on cruise. I don't buy it. Sorry. All right, success stories. If you've been watching in the live chat, wow, congratulations to the members. This is why you want to be a member. One member last week got 14 checks, 14 months of rent checks. Another viewer got 12 months of utility checks. Folks, this is not a couple hundred dollars. This is thousands and thousands of dollars. Everyone has a water bill or electric bill or heating oil bill. This is the difference. And we're not even to the big bills of utilities in the fall. Then we had spe Spelly, <laughs> Speedy, Spelly. Oh my goodness. I'm going to just butcher that till the cows comes home. Uh, till Sterling comes home. <laughs> we had him get uh, the wonderful check A's and wonderful check C's, and his message is stay with it. Sometimes the forums, you know, sometimes they say you cross your T, dot your I, and you crossed your I and dotted your T. So it's, you have to stay with it. He says, just keep on telling viewers, stay with it. They'll get the payment. And then, of course, that one big viewer, that one big viewer got. An email from the state of Florida 
two Thursdays ago and says, ma'am, congratulations, you've been approved for check B. Wow. She got approved for check B, yes, for her mortgage. Well, that's wonderful, great news. Well, it gets better than that. She got approved for 18 months of her mortgage. My goodness. 18 months of her mortgage? Yes. That's not $1,000. That's tens of thousands of dollars, but it gets better than that. She applied for a mortgage and all her utilities. Five checks for 18 months. That is 80 to 20 checks. That's why you want to be a member. It pays to be a member. Why would you not become a member? And the ironic story about it was that she put it into this, page two of the LA worksheet. She put it into her worksheet. She forgot to look at it, so she was surprised when she got that email. That second page of the worksheet for members only has a place for you to keep track of the checks you apply for, the date you apply for, the periods of payment, the amount you got paid across the board. you got to keep track. The next page is your benefits. So this is a very helpful table for you to keep track of your benefit rises. We need that July data coming in on the 8th of this next week. We need the August data and the September data. But yeah, as we're seeing, if the data is so strong for uh, July, we may feel very confident that the percentage raise of your benefits is almost a fail complete. Then, 16 months, gasoline. Okay, let me go into this. I did not feature this earlier today, and I said I would. Your gasoline is tracking much lower. Why is an international price of Brent crude down to $94? I asked this question early in the, in the live chat. If you wrote in the live chat that the oil traders are trading down the price of gasoline because they believe the U.S. economy is... If you didn't answer it before, answer it right now. Go into recession. You got it right. The oil traders absolutely believe there's, there's going to be a recession. It's going to be very serious. And they agree with the bond traders. They agree with me. That's why they're trading down the price of gasoline to $94. Six, uh, seven, seven, student loan debt forgiveness. The president's likely to do this. Um, uh, I don't know. When he feels in the mood. <laughs> uh, it's getting ridiculous at this point. $10,000 for individuals who make $150,000 less. The president's already forgiven student loans for individuals who became disabled after graduation. People went to work in the nonprofit or public sector after graduation. Individuals who were defrauded by the university. Let's go into those success stories for check C's. We've been doing check C's on this channel for a long time. And let's look how wonderful the success stories have been. From Richard, and Nisi, and Nancy, and Mark, and Elizabeth. $30,000 for check C for rent, go get it. You saw that viewer who got 14 weeks of rent this last week. Why would you not become a member? Utilities. You saw that one viewer who got 12 months of utilities last week. Look at these numbers for utilities. Mark's brother in law got 15000 Everyone has utilities. Why would you not do this? Snap. Mark's brother in law got 15, is getting a quarter million dollars over 10 years. Combinations. A combinations of checks. Like Spelly, who got, I got it right this time, Spelly, who got check A and B. Nisi and Mark and, and Lorraine, let's see what happened to Nisi. Nisi went from 23000 to 50000 Mark went from 32000 here to this graphic, 50000 Then he got, went to 100000 Then he got check B, 166 Lorraine, she went from 105 to 150 What is the universal uh, story for Lorraine, Johnny, Nisi, Margaret, Nancy, and all the rest of them? Number one, they're in all the live chats. You can't miss a video. I mean, imagine if you missed today's videos. You do not see the historically very significant data released on Friday, the, the payroll jobs numbers, and those unemployment to the lowest level since 1969. And now understand that half of the analysts have now pivoted the other way, saying we're not even going to have a recession, and good times are here to stay, and the other half saying, oh boy, get your money saved up, because this recession is going to be down and dirty and a lot more serious than we originally thought. Imagine you missed today's recordings. Imagine if you're not a member and don't see this analysis. Imagine you don't see my projections of the data. Imagine what happens. <sighs> Thank goodness you become a member right today. So first, they watch all the videos. Number two, they keep on getting checks. You want to keep on getting checks, checks today, checks tomorrow. You know why? Because later this fall, there's going to be the heating oil is going to go up. The, all these utility bills are going to go straight through the roof, and you might have financial difficulty affording that. You want to get that assistance right tonight. Step one, go under this video, subscribe. You're watching LA Light, the number three most watched financial news channel in America, on fire, heading to number two. You see what's happened on this channel in just a short period of time. I was the only broadcast to report we're going to recession in February of this year. We are in a recession. The only broadcaster in spring of last year to say inflation was coming, coming in at 8% in December and stay prolonged and not be temporary. Everyone else said 2 to 3% and was going to be gone in a month. 
I also told you 260,000 new jobless claims for Thursday's number last week. It came in exactly at 260. I also told you 75 basis points for the Federal Reserve in September. Now, while Shiannis went from 30% green and being 100% green tonight, in fact, the federal governor, Bo, Bo, Bowman, you saw this morning, basically says it's going to be 75 basis points. The analysis is always spot on here because I deal with the data. You and I deal with the data. And it's important to know the data so that you're on the right side of the equation. Go under this video, subscribe, then become a member, join the channel, and go to the Finance channel and hit that bell button. Hit that bell button so that you have complete notification of everything that's going on. Have you seen all the changes come to this channel? First, LLA Live, which was once a test show, is now 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Massive hit. That one day I was gone, it delivered nearly 100 new members in one video alone. Thank you for all the new members. And thank you for the existing members who have stayed with this channel for 18, 20 something months. And thank you for all the members who continue to upgrade from Purple Hawk to Purple Power, Calcino to Calcino VIP. You need to become a member, subscribe, hit that bell at the front of the channel to make sure all notifications are set to all on. Now, let's go into this massively important equation of this recession versus no recession. And we're going to start with understanding the two camps and why one camp is saying one thing and why the other camp is saying something totally different. More importantly, I want you to understand the following part of the equation. You want to become a member, stay a member, and get as many checks as possible because one of the camps is going to be wrong. One of the camps is going to be wrong, and you don't want to not get money thinking that your camp is right. Mike, I may be wrong. I may be wrong. But so what I'm saying to you is get as much money, stimulus checks as you can, because one of these camps is going to be wrong. Let's look at the two camps. First, it's generally the stock traders. Say the labor number, the unemployment number, released on Friday is the lowest number since uh, the 1969. That is a very strong economy. They also say when you have 75% of, of uh, S&P companies beating on earnings over the last few weeks, that's a very strong economy. My reaction to those two analyses is, well, I don't agree. First, the unemployment number is not the same as the jobless claims number. The jobless claims number is going straight up. So something's wrong here if the jobless claims are going up. Number two, this is the more black and white. This is data. It's not even analysis. Historically, in all the recessions this U.S. economy has endured, the labor market at the start of the recession is strong. The labor market does not fall apart at the start of a recession. And for any equity trader that keeps on saying, it's not a recession because the labor market's strong, that's ridiculous. That's really basic one-on-one stuff, folks. The labor market does not fall apart at the start of a recession. It falls apart later in a recession. Certain parts of an economy fall apart during a recession at different stages. Housing falls apart earlier. Labor's at the very end of the equation. Very end of the equation. So to say labor is strong, and hence there's no recession, that's if we got historically what recession has delivered in the United States. Now, the next part of the equation is this one, which is the stock traders keep on betting against the Federal Reserve. They're saying Federal Reserve is not going to do this. Federal Reserve is not going to do that. I got to say, this is sort of basic. <laughs> that governor's come out and say, uh, we're raising interest rates in September. We're raising interest rates indefinitely until we get inflation down. Inflation's not peaked, and then the stock traders say, they're not going to do anything. The Federal Reserve's not going to do anything. They just told you they're going to do something. So there's something really strange about this whole thing, that the equity traders keep on saying things as though they have um, earmuffs on. <laughs> earmuffs on, and they don't hear the Federal Reserve when the governors when they talk. I mean, they just make this, they, they already gave you guidance. They already said, I'm doing interest rate spikes, and we never told you we're done. And who are these crazy equity traders? All right, let's go over to the camp that I'm in and the bond traders and the, and the gas traders. The oil traders, the bond traders, and myself all believe that the data is indicative that there's not only going to be a recession, but a very serious recession. Why are all the three camps doing the same analysis? First, we all believe that the Federal Reserve is going to spike interest rates, not just in September, but October and November, because guess what? We've been doing this now for what? Uh, the, how many months has the Federal Reserve been raising rates? Months, 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 six months plus. And they've not gotten interest rates down. They were supposed to get those interest rates down months ago. So clearly something's not working. We all That's an easy given. So to say that the Federal Reserve is going to do one more interest rate spike and then inflation is going to be solved, I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, that's really ridiculous. No one could think that inflation is going to 
poof, go away in September because everything has worked with the Federal Reserve up to this point. No. And now the Federal Reserve, and you and I have to agree upon this one, now the Federal Reserve has a carte blanche, has an e-ticket to raise interest rates because the labor number was so good last Friday. I just think that those equity traders don't have their head screwed on right. I just really don't. I just I, I think it's so obvious. I think it's so obvious. The Federal Reserve's telling you it's obvious. They're going to raise rates. They're going to continue to raise rates. Inflation hasn't come down. They will stay with it until inflation goes down, and it ain't going down anytime soon. So I think that part of the equation is very simple. I just don't know why anyone would say good times are here to stay, because there are not good times at the moment. All right, let's go over to the analysis of why this economy is doing this. This is analysis, not data. It comes from me. It doesn't come from anyone else. My analysis of the situation is based upon the three data points. One, consumer spending. Two, uh, price of goods you're spending for at the store. Three, credit card debt. And four, uh, interest rate spikes in the Federal Reserve. The data we've seen over the last month shows that the credit card debt that consumers are carrying right now is the highest credit card debt of 20 years. So people are spending crazy and putting it on credit card. And they're not doing it with cash out of the bank. They're doing it with the credit card. Number two, the credit card rate, we all know, is the highest rate of a long time because the Federal Reserve has raised those interest rates. Does this look like it's going to end with a bad ending to the story? I think it is. If you keep on throwing things on the credit card and the rates are going through the roof and your and, and the data coming out shows that the salaries have not gone up proportionally to the rate of inflation of the goods you're buying in the store, this is an end while. You go to the store and the product you would normally pay for $2 is now $6. So you buy it, but you put it on the credit card. I'll put it on the credit card. I'll, I'll, you know, I, I'll be able to pay it off. I have a job. Uh, and, and that's what people are doing, running up the credit card debt and guess and we all know what happens when you run up credit card debt. The debt gets more expensive and gets more expensive. And the interest rates are going up and the debt is more expensive. And then suddenly you keep on throwing things on the credit card. And we already know hospitality travel leashes through the roof. Everyone's traveling and hospitality. Put it on the credit card. Put it on the credit card. And the credit card debt's really great to keep on. What did I do to myself? That reality check hasn't come yet. That reality check hasn't come yet. So that's my analysis of situations, that Americans are really rampantly spending in a way they should not, running up credit card debt in a way they should not, and that credit card debt is not sustainable, not affordable because their salaries are not going up in proportion to the uh, cost of the products they're buying. There's no indication of the cost of products being bought has come down, and there's all indication the interest rates are going to continue going up, and those credit card debts are going to be more expensive. Does this end looking really bad? Scarily, I think so. I think it does. And imagine if you go into a recession. Well, I'm not even talking about the security of your job. If the economy goes into a deep, prolonged recession, you know exactly what gets killed first. Jobs. Jobs, well, not first, eventually. Remember, labor falls apart later in a recession. So you have all this credit card debt and you piled it up. Ugh, it doesn't look good. And that's why I believe the bond traders have it right. I believe the oil traders have it right. And I believe my analysis is the same as theirs. And I think the equity traders are saying, oh, good times are here to say. <laughs> no recession, you know, just have a lobster fest and wave at the check at the beach all the time. Uh, no, don't do that on my watch. <laughs> don't do that on my watch. Because remember, the check doesn't wave back. You deserve all these big sums of money. Go get them tonight. Go get those big checks across the board. Gasoline is tracking lower. The bond two-year, inver the yield inversion is inverting worse. The labor number is getting stronger. The credit card debt is growing. The credit card interest rate is getting higher. Does this all sound like a recession? Of course it sounds like a recession. It sounds like a bunch of people who simply are just spending lily-nilly and thinking it's sustainable and they are gonna be in a rude awakening. Uh, finally, my comment tonight. There was an expression someone told me a few days ago. I don't know where I heard it from, but let me read it on the air. COVID's making people crazy. I know COVID's sort of over, maybe not over. I did not have COVID, by the way. Um, and, and, and COVID's making people crazy. Some people had to get this, this locked out of their system. They had to travel. They had to go different places. They had to, you know, who cares if the bread is $20 a loaf? Uh, you know, I deserve it. 
<laughs> yeah, I deserve my carbs. COVID has made people crazy. And I think the consumer spending on credit card debt is COVID crazy. And that type of lack of financial accountability to oneself is, I think, what's going to cause the recession. The Federal Reserve wants to, cons wants to curb consumer spending. And if you can't get people to stop spending things on the credit card debt, then what do you do? You slow down the economy. If you slow down the economy, then what happens? The employers don't, are not making as much money. What happens then? Then eventually they lay off the people. And then you can't afford the credit card because you don't have a job. Confusing, I hopefully made it clear for you tonight. It's likes like this that you can't wait to get money. You need to get it across the board. You want to get as much money as you can. Step one, increase all your bank savings by getting the big stimulus feature on this channel. Number two, remove all your adjustable rate debt in the household, like credit card debt. I've been saying this for a long time. Please do not run out that credit card debt on my watch. Don't do it because it will not be affordable. And if people aren't just, you know, celebrating and spending and spending around you, you may have to sort of distance yourself from them. I know it's sort of hard but to see people spend and you're not the one spending, but you got to do it because I think there's two groups of people in this economy. People who don't understand the severity of what's coming around the corner and people think that great times are here to stay left and right. Finally, a personal message from me to you. Thank you for all your wonderful, kind comments that you delivered in the days that I was absent. Again, I was hospitalized. I'm feeling great tonight. Uh, it's a little hot tonight. So if you say, uh, you look over here. Yeah, it's hot tonight. It's not me. It's just hot again. <laughs> and inflation's running hot. <laughs> Recession's running hot. Uh, labor is a running uh, hot. <laughs> Joe Biden's popular. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Mr. President. Anyway, um, lobster shorts, never hot. Lobster shorts, never hot. San Francisco hairstyles, uh, no, <laughs> not hot. Not hot as well. Please get those four symbols checks. You deserve them. Get them tonight. Go into this video, become a member. Tell people to come on over. You're watching the number three most watched financial news channel, America. Told you right about recession, inflation. Told you where labor was going. Told you where the recession's going. And ultimately, if you and I get the same data and we look at the same data, we can have differing opinions. That's great. So long as we understand what the data is, we're never going to ignore data to come up with a sort of analysis out of left field. And that is why you and I will always stay ahead of the ball game. And that is why you need to do this with the potential of a very, very bad recession. A family that cares and a family that stays together. That is the Purple Power family. Thank you for being part of this incredible family. Thank you for your incredible comments. If I did not respond to you on your social media comment, I'm trying to get through all of them in the next few days, one at a time. Become a member. Go into this video, become a member. Thank you for joining me tonight, and jump in the live feed if you're not watching already. That show will air throughout the night. Stay informed, stay focused, have a beautiful night, and stay with Ally for more.